Hello, welcome to my first video. I am doing OCR AS Biology and covering Unit 2, and that's Biological Molecules, Biodiversity, Food and Health. Today I'm going to be covering the beginning of the Biological Molecules chapter, and that is water. Um, this is mainly just a trial video to see if you like it, to see if it's any good, and if you want me to do more, I will, hopefully. Right, firstly, water. Water is a well-known liquid. We all use it to survive, and it has many important properties in the survival of organisms and just general life. So, here is two water molecules. One oxygen, two hydrogen. The oxygen and the hydrogen are covalently bonded. They are sharing electrons. This is an intramolecular force. But two water molecules together will form a bond called a hydrogen bond. This is an intermolecular force. Now, this happens because water is polar. It has a slight charge. We call a slight charge delta. Now, oxygen can attract electrons more than hydrogen, making it more negative because electrons are negative. So we say that oxygen has a delta negative charge, hydrogen delta positive. Now, as you know, opposites attract. So delta negative will attract a delta positive. So oxygen will attract hydrogen and create this intermolecular force called a hydrogen bond. Now, this is the strongest type of intermolecular force you can get, but it's still weaker than intramolecular forces such as covalent bonds. But hydrogen bonds are responsible for many of water's properties. This is the list. There's a high specific heat capacity, high latent heat of evaporation. I will go on to say what these are in a minute. It is cohesive. It is a solvent. It is an ice, well, it's ice when solid, and when it's a liquid, it is water. And it's useful in many metabolic processes. So, firstly, high specific heat capacity. This is the energy required to increase the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. For water, this is quite high. It's about 4.18 kilojoules of energy, which is quite a lot. This is because the hydrogen bonds between two water molecules can absorb energy and quite a lot. So obviously 4.18 kilojoules because if you increase the temperature, you increase the kinetic energy. That's what temperature is effectively. But the hydrogen bonds are stable and a lot of energy is required to make, make the molecules vibrate, increasing the kinetic energy. Now, it also has high latent heat of evaporation. This is for a very similar reason. Hydrogen bonds are very stable and require a lot of energy to break. This means the um, latent heat of evaporation is how much energy required to get a substance from one stage or phase, let's say liquid, to another gas. And this, is, this means that it needs a lot of energy to break those hydrogen bonds. What is cohesive? Now, if you've done unit one, you'll know that, um, that cohesion tension theory is used in the xylem vessels of plants. It's water molecules attract each other because of hydrogen bonds and can stick to each other, creating very tall, strong columns of water because they all stick together. That's what cohesion is. This also helps water to flow because all the water molecules are sticking together, they'll pull each other along. So it makes it quite good for as a transport medium, which is also why it's good as a liquid, which I come on to in a bit, actually, as a liquid. Water is also a solvent. Things can dissolve in it, particularly ionic compounds. These are compounds with one positive ion and a negative ion, and the most common is sodium chloride, which has sodium, which is a positive ion, and chlorine, which is a negative ion. Since water is polar, it has slight positive and negative charges, it can interact with the positive and negative charges in an ionic compound. So the positive sodium atom and the negative chlorine atom will break apart and will dissolve in the water, and water molecules will kind of go around them. That's what dissolving is. 
and this can be very useful because um, if you're transporting um, ions like nitrate ions, sodium ions, chlorine ions, water can do this because of the hydrogen bonds. With most things to do with water it comes down to the hydrogen bonds. Water can form ice, that's a solid state of water obviously. Now this happens because because of the hydrogen bonds the molecules spread out, they're not as close together as they would be in normal liquid. Now this creates a lattice-like structure, if you've seen sodium chloride it's similar to that. Now this makes water less dense in its solid state than its liquid state because it's got that lattice structure, it's more spread out. This causes ice to float and this means that ice will form a layer on rivers and lakes and will create an insulating layer for the water underneath. The water underneath will not freeze and it means that organisms can stay alive in the water underneath. Now this is obviously very useful because it means that aquatic animals can survive in cold cold um, environments so let's say for example the Arctic you have um, you know whales up there and they can survive because the water underneath doesn't freeze because frozen less dense water floats. Water is also used in in the metabolism it takes part in many chemical reactions as either a reactant or a product. Reactant it is used in photosynthesis in plants and also in hydrolysis which you will hear about later if you decide that you want me to make more videos. Um, this is when a water molecule is used to break apart a di something like a disaccharide or a polysaccharide, a, a polymer, into two smaller units. But it also forms as a product in respiration and condensation. Condensation is the opposite of hydrolysis. So um, two molecules will join together, create a bond and release a water molecule. This is an example of a question from a past exam paper. Examiners like throwing big questions about water, 8, 9, 10, 11 marks even, and they're very easy to get if you remember them, obviously. But it's a good place to not lose marks. Here's the question. Ponds provide a very stable environment for aquatic organisms. Three properties of water that contribute to this stability are as follows. The density of water decreases as the temperature falls below 4 degrees, so ice floats. It acts as a solvent for ions such as nitrate. A large quantity of energy is required to raise the temperature of water by 1 degrees. I will let you pause it here if you want to think about it or write the answer before I say the answer. Good, so firstly it's important to remember that this question wants one mark for quality of written communication, as all big questions do. In this case they want links between the behaviour of water and the survival of organisms, so keep that in mind. Firstly, density. As we've said, molecules spread out into a lattice structure, which forms an insulating layer on top of the water so the organisms below don't freeze. Now, these are the key bits, this is how the organisms survive. Water doesn't freeze, so the organisms don't freeze, they can still move, and currents allow flow of nutrients. So, that's the reasons why it does it and how it helps the organisms. Solubility. Very simple, ions are polar and they interact with water. So organisms can uptake these minerals. Examples are nitrates can go in and they will help create amino acids for proteins. Very simple. Finally, temperature. There are there are many stable hydrogen bonds. Energy is required to break the bonds. This is high specific heat capacity, meaning a lot of energy is needed to increase the temperature of water by one degrees. So a sm that this provides a small variation in temperature and allows enzymes to work. Enzymes work in a very specific temperature range. So if you keep the temperature constant, it means that the organisms won't lose their enzymes and die. It also means gases remain soluble. And another th thing is that it is useful in, our, in us, obviously this is not from the question but a bit of extra knowledge, it's useful in us because it helps to regulate a constant body temperature. In conclusion, water works because of hydrogen bonds. This creates thermal stability, so it takes a lot of energy to turn it into its gaseous form or raise the temperature. 
it can freeze into ice which is less dense which insulates the water underneath. At natural temperature it's a liquid. This is quite rare because another molecule, hydrogen sulfide, which acts very similarly to water, is a gas at this temperature. Water is quite rare that it is a liquid. This is because of the strong hydrogen bonds. This acts as a transport medium. Water is polar, so it can act as a solvent. It can dissolve ions in it that are charged. It's also cohesive. It can stick together, so it can help push nutrients or water up a plant. It can also create water tension, so pond skaters can walk across the water. And is also used in metabolism, such as photosynthesis, hydrolysis, to help break down molecules. So thank you for listening to my um lesson kind of on water i hope that was helpful please leave any comments if it was helpful or anything i can do to improve if you want more if you don't if i should just give up <laughs> fair enough i should but um i hope that helped if you need any more assistance my email will be in the description so you can email me and ask for help um yeah, good luck thanks for listening